good evening everyone respected senior colleagues and friends welcome you all to vijay diagnostic webinar series i am dr k l srujana consultant radiologist at vdc vizag branch and today our topic our webinar topic is the role of imaging in first trimester bleeding our subject speaker is dr lokapani she is a consultant radiologist at vdc vizag branch and our distinguished uh, guest is dr radhika she is chief obstetrician and gynecologist at medicover hospital vizag she has done her mbbs and md in obstetric and gynec from andhra medical college vizag she has over 20 years of experience and she has many achievements in education and career i'm just mentioning a few of them ma'am <laughs> fourth rank in the entrance exam received gold medal from padma bhushan dr sri shiva reddy for highest marks in ophthalmology she received dr pullaparthi srinivas dr t srinivas memorial gold medal and shivaji rao's memorial medal for highest marks in medicine she also received bamidipati kamala devi memorial prize for highest marks in medicine among lady students she underwent training in iui and she underwent laparoscopy training from dr narsaya care hospital hyderabad and dr hafiz sandre hospital kasargod and our consultant dr lok pawani has done her mbbs and degree in radiology from gunter medical college uh, ma'am before starting the session i just want to know the gynecology what the gynecologist expect from the radiologist in first trimester bleeding ma'am <laughs> and your experience <laughs> okay thank you for your uh, kind introduction today topic is like uh, very important topic where really uh, the family whole family get disturbed with this complaint of vaginal bleeding in the first trimester actually and they all rush into the op for a uh, uh, complaint of vaginal bleeding and which can be in a different varied uh, forms it could be a, a slight bleeding to severe bleeding and passage of products with this actually we need to have a sonologist uh, uh, confirmation whether the pregnancy is really uh, intrauterine or extra uterine or if it is like complete or incomplete abortion or it could be a blighted ovum or missed abortion comparing all these things um, the major role of an obstetrician and a sonologist uh, comes with an emergency condition like ectopic pregnancy which has to be attended in an emergency way and another thing is uh, threatened abortion which contributes about one in five pregnancies uh, so it is a good percentage that uh, um, we have to take care of this threatened miscarriage where we have to give them the confidence whether they are going to continue uh, they can continue the pregnancy or they are going to have a positive pregnancy and all these things so with the help of the uh, um, like uh, transvaginal scan which is the best way of uh, de uh, detecting all the uh, types of uh, problems that are there in first trimester bleeding so uh, first thing is and uh, uh, as a gynecologist i'll be ruling out all clinical examination will be done and we'll rule out all vulva vaginal causes of bleeding or other conditions where really she is bleeding or not or uh the way it is being presented and finally we come to a clinical diagnosis it could be a threatened abortion so that is the condition where we have to really treat her uh, with the help of a sonologist other diagnosis when you give we'll like to go for dnc if it were to be a missed abortion or blighted ovum or incomplete abortion or if dnc can be required in case of uh, incomplete abortion so that's all and in ectopic pregnancies with the uh, uh the condition which the patient presents we directly go for a surgery is it not now coming for threatened abortion we would like to uh, like you will be giving the information about the baby's heartbeat and the thing is uh, subchorionic hemorrhage and the fetal heart rate really uh, the type of uh, the beat how much it is if it is less than in the lower values really the guarded prognosis will be there and we have to alert the attendants 
regarding the prognostic factors if the if we'll go for serum beta hcg values if they are low uh, and uh, if the heartbeat is low and the maternal age is more than 35 years of age and coming to progesterone values if they are less than 50 uh, millimoles per liter all these uh, prognostic factors really count whether they are going to continue pregnancy or not so another thing is uh, we have to be very careful that 50% of these threatened miscarriages end in abortion so they completely uh, uh, go for an abortion case and uh, the remaining 50% of the cases of these threatened abortions 15 to 20 percent they land into preterm labor so all these uh, percentages why we should know is we should be able to counsel the patient regarding these conditions like uh, how they have to be very careful like they have to take proper rest and they can't go on for traveling purposes or regular and uh, avoid intercourse and at the same time they have to continue the drugs with progesterone and we have to explain all these things for this we have to be in constant touch with the sonologist to regularly call them on an emergency basis i think lockdown and this rujna must be worried whether radhika madam is sending a case and she'll call me immediately like what has happened what has to be done to the patient all these factors i think uh, you are all well versed that uh, i'll be bothering you people for that uh, thing and uh, i would like to know in a um, methodical way how lok bhavani is going to take her uh, this presentation okay over to you bhavani hello thank you for the introduction mama am i am i audible yes yeah, yeah, you are yeah. audible yes yeah. yeah thank you ma'am and uh, radhika ma'am definitely you will get a, uh, a good presentation here and uh, we will always be responding well to you whatever the questions yeah, and whatever phone calls we get from you ma'am it is so nice to hear from you okay let's start the presentation yeah so uh, good everyone today our topic is evaluation of bleeding of vagina in first trimester of pregnancy that is nothing but uh, up to the complete development of the embryo that is up to 12 weeks of the last menstrual period so we'll discuss it under the incidence causes diagnosis so this vaginal bleeding is common in first trimester of pregnancy and it occurs in about 20 to 40% of pregnant women the source ma'am my presentation is not uh, clear you it's clear only sometimes we are getting re sound ma'am yeah yeah the presentation is okay but the, it's not that smooth uh, okay, okay. Uh, go ahead uh, the sources are always uh, okay ma'am uh, the source it... It is always a maternal cause uh, due to the disruption of blood vessels in the decidua and discrete cervical and vaginal lesions. Uh, coming to the diagnosis, first is important is a history. That is the gestational age, character of bleeding, whether it is light or heavy, associated with pain or whether it's painless, intermittent or constant. Next is examination, the laboratory findings which include a UPT test and beta HCG correlation, and next is the transvaginal examination. This transvaginal examination is the cornerstone in the evaluation of this first trimester bleeding to help us to differentiate whether it is an intrauterine or extrauterine pregnancy, ectopic or heterotropic, or uh, one or multiple gestations and uh, trophoblastic condition diseases. So coming to the causes. these are related to pregnancy and others are associated with ones related to age of chorionic hemorrhage retained products of conception ectopic pregnancy gestational trophoblastic disease demise of a twin implantation bleeding uh, the associated with pregnancy are cervical vaginitis trauma poly or fibroid malignancy rupture of varicose veins discuss these causes uh, first is the miscarriage miscarriage is the spontaneous termination of pregnancy before 20 weeks of gestation the phrase 20 is referred to as a fetal death in utero terminology divided as threatened miscarriage missed miscarriage 
unacceptable, incomplete, and a complete miscarriage. So let's see the different types of miscarriages here. First is a threatened abortion, where there is a vaginal bleeding with a closed cervix. On ultrasound, we find that either it might be a complete empty uterus or a grip uh, with, with or without a live embryo and with or without a subchorionic bleed. Here we can find a uh, normal gestational sac with an uh, embryo present within it. And uh, this is a small, small embryo with absent heart and subchorionic hematoma. Uh, there are a few pro poor prognostic features for threatened miscarriage, like uh, whenever the fetal, bradi, uh, fetal heart rate is less than 80 to 90 beats per minute, or if there is any uh, calcified yolk sac or an irregular gestational sac, these conditions may uh, lead to some poor prognosis in, in threatened miscarriage. The next is an inevitable abortion. Here, clinically, the bleeding with an open cervix. On ultrasound, there is a distorted, elongated gestational sac, which is a low in position and bulging into the cervical canal. Next is a complete abortion, where there is vaginal bleeding with open cervix and expulsion of all the products of conception. On ultrasound, it is a completely empty uterus with a known or previously seen uterine pregnancy. Next is an incomplete abortion, vaginal open cervix and expulsion of some products of conception. On ultrasound, it is uh, generally we refer it to as a retained products of conception where there is a trigger atrium or a heterogeneous uh, material present in the endometrium and with the no definite or a regular sac present in it. Abortion, which is referred to as an embryonic demise without expression of the products of conception with or without vaginal bleeding. On uh, ultrasound, this embryonic demise is uh, referred to as whenever there is an um, uh, the gestational mean sac diameter of more than 25 mm with absent fetal pole or when the fetal pole, the CRL level uh, is more than 7 mm with absent heartbeat, we can see uh, we can say it as an embryonic demise. Next, uh, this is a uh, incomplete where there is a quick material in the endometrium and here we can find an irregular gestation sac uh, at present, which is a case of an uh, incomplete, and this is a case of missed abortion where the embryo CRL value 11 mm corresponding to seven weeks, one day, and there is an absent heartbeat. So it is a missed abortion here. Next cause is a subchorionic hemorrhage. This subchorionic hemorrhage occurs when there is a perigestational hemorrhage and the blood collects between the uterine wall and the chorionic membrane in pregnancy. It is a frequent cause of first and second trimester bleeding. It typically occurs within first 20 weeks of gestation. And uh, the radiography here has action uh, adjacent to the sac. And depending on the time we lapse from bleeding, this collection may vary its echogen. In acute conditions, it might be a hyperechoic, which is a, a difficult to differentiate from the adjacent chorion. In the chronic collection, it is a poor anechoic collection adjacent to the gestation sac. Next is the retained products of conception. This refers to persistence of placental or fetal tissues in the uterus following delivery, termination of pregnancy or miscarriage. The radiographic features it includes on ultrasound is an enlarged uterus with a thickened endometrium. This endometrial thickening of more than 10 mm following dilatation and curettage or following an abortion uh, is uh, uh, when the endometrial thickness is more than 10 mm, it is referred to as a retained products of conception. And on uh, Doppel, if there is vascularity in the thickened endometrium, it is in favor of the retained products of conception. But the absence of vascularity does not exclude the uh, diagnosis here. Next cause is the ectopic pregnancy. This ectopic pregnancy is referred to as when, uh, the implantation of the fertilized ovum outside of the uterine cavity. The risk factors include in vitro fertility, ectopic pregnancy, tubal injury or surgery, including tubal ligation, pelvic inflammatory disease, salpingitis, isthmica nodosa, endometrial injury, intrauterine revises, endometriosis, previous placenta previa, congenital uterine anomalies, smoking, past history of spontaneous or induced abortion, and advanced maternal age. 
the presentation is commonly the classic presentation is with abdominal pain and bleeding but the symptoms may not necessarily be severe often there may be only mild pelvic pain spotting in early pregnancy the location is commonly the most common location is within the fallopian tube uh, among that the tubal ectopic ampullary ectopic is the most common among the tubal ectopics next are isthmal ectopic and fimbrial ectopic the other locations are interstitial ectopic or corneal ectopic ovarian ectopic cervical ectopic scar ectopic at the site of previous previous cesarean scar and the rarely we can find an abdominal ectopic next on ultrasound examination of a uh, ectopic pregnancy here we can find the uterus is an enlarged uterus with no evidence of intrauterine gestation sac but only a thick second endometrium is seen in this we can find a heteroechoic lesion with internal gestation sac like structure we can find in the adnexa which is separate from the ovaries and it is a lot it ectopic uh, uh, tubal ectopic pregnancy and non uh, colored or clearly visible to our appearance on power doppler and uh, 3d also different so, topic find an eccentric location of the gestation sac located at the cornua of the uterus of an interstitial ectopic like pregnancy here we can find this is a transvaginal interstitial node with a hole that is located in the interstitial portion of the fallopian tube and this is an axial t2 weighted mri or uh, showing a cystic gestational sac at the left uterine angle with a heterogeneous wall thickening and this structure we can see it is a contiguous to the myometrium which indicates that it inaminated from the myometrium this is a case of an ovarian ectopic pregnancy with a surrounding ring of fire appearance and this is a cervical ectopic where uh, the because a gestation sac is noted in the cervix with an uh, no evidence of intrauterine pregnancy next rare case of a hepatic pregnancy where the gestation sac is noted in the uh, left lobe of the liver this is a ectopic where the patient presented with a severe pain uh, here and uh, we can see, uh, see an enlarged uterus with no evidence of any intrauterine gestation sac the pod pouch of douglas it shows an a uh, uh, pre fluid with heterogeneous echos and here we can find the right adnexia it is filled with a heterogeneous lesion here and uh, on a trans abdominal scan is also essential in this ectopic pregnancy as here we can find free fluid in the hepatorenal uh, space also next cause we come to demise of a twin demise of a twin is a complication that can occur in a twin pregnancy particularly in monochorionic pregnancies and may be due to a wide range of conditions once the twin dies most of the dead twin tends to be absorbed behind a small flattened remnant known as fetus papyrus here on ultrasound examination here uh, in a twin we find that one of the twin is very small when compared to the other twin and it is having oligohydramnia and this twin is not case is a, uh, one of the reason for uh, the bleeding and uh, first also that is disease it results from abnormal proliferation of trophoblastic tissue and so it is including tumor like lesions molar pregnancies gestational trophoblastic neoplasm the molar pregnancy here in includes partial hydatid form mole complete hydatid form mole invasive and metastatic hydatid form mole first is a complete hydatid form mole this complete hydatid form mole is a type of molar pregnancy and it falls at the benign end of the spectrum of gestational trophoblastic disease and this is a transvaginal scan of the showing uh, an enlarged uterus with thickened endometrium and this in the thickened endometrium this is referred to as a snowstorm appearance 
bunch of grapes appearance in a complete hydratative form mole with no evidence to find a one thing uh, this thickened of the mole partial hydratative form mole is a type of mole Polar pregnancy, which in turn falls under the spectrum of gestational trophoblastic disease, and here the radiographic features here the ultrasound we can see that there is a fe uh, fetus present with uh, just an enlarged placenta, and the placenta shows multiple cystic spaces. This is a one of the presentation, and in some times there may be only an amorph em empty gestation sac present or a uh, intrauterine gestation sac with uh, internal. Inappropriate or amorphously formed fetal echoes may also be present within that, and sometimes it may present also as a hydropic degeneration. In this, next is the uh, lastly we come to the implantation bleeding. There may be a small amount of spotting or bleeding 10 to 14 days after the menstrual cycle. This is nothing but because of the implantation of the fertilized egg in the decidua. This is also one of the cause for the bleeding in first trimester. Thank you, ma'am, for and the giving thing me I would like to ask you about the start presenting you this topic. And I, uh, I would like to tell you about uh, nowadays we are seeing more of scar pregnancies also. So we should yeah. be able to uh, find out those uh, scar pregnancies. And uh, one recently I have seen oh, this yes. case. They have hello. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Can I uh, share my experience? Ah, yes, ma'am. <laughs> sure, okay. sure. Like there was uh, a uh, yes, person who has come with UPT positive, and uh, they have said that there is a pregnancy in the uh, scar, scar pregnancy. Ma'am. Okay. Uh -huh. they, uh, they have come all the way from US and they found that uh, they have they are pregnant and finally they found that it is a scar pregnancy and it has been referred uh, from some other hospital to me uh, and uh, after finding uh, ultrasound findings we we thought that it is could be a scar pregnancy routinely we see that only no and we have counseled her for uh, both for hysterectomy at the same time and removal of the scar pregnancy and all this. And uh, we have gone for MRI. So in that MRI, we could uh, clearly uh, see this. There is a cervical pregnancy and the sac, a bit of it is extending towards the scar because it is very rare. First time when they have done the cesarean section, you don't have much idea about that, uh, how much nearer it is to the cervix and the scar and this pregnancy also. And uh, after uh, and doing the surgery, I found that it is a pure cervical pregnancy and uh, a small part of it is extending towards the scar. Okay. So that's the reason why she has presented with bleeding and uh, uh, values of beta HCG are not uh, uh, that good enough. And we have found out to be an ectopic pregnancy. Okay, that is good. But uh, such type of cases, no, we really get afraid of how they will be presenting and all that. Clinically, it is like very difficult. Finally, I could save her uterus by opening the scar. I have removed the all the cervical ectopic pregnancy. And control the bleeding with the police catheter uh, bulb filled with the saline uh, 30 ml into the lower segment of the cervix from a, uh, from the scar itself. I have found I have stayed there for 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, whether if the bleeding is controlled or not, uh, I could control the bleeding uh, from uh, intra-abdominal only. So then I thought that I could really save her uterus, and we have closed the scar and. Uh, uh, after pro uh, finishing the surgery, I have kept the bulb into the cervix for 24 hours and uh, removed the uh, folis and she was fine. She went away after um, the third or post, post, uh, fourth post-operative day. Okay, like, uh, like so many cases of scar pregnancies are nowadays we are able to see them. Because of many uh, IVF centers and so yes, many cases. Yes, ma'am, I have two health for this one. Uh, Hello. MRI ah, helps us for yes. this identification of the scar pregnancy 
and uh, also the invasive molar pregnancy and uh, in also in uterine anomalies ma'am whenever there is a uterine anomaly with repeated abortion so the mri helps us to identify the uh, pregnancy whether uh, it is in a, uh, one of the horn in bicornuate uterus so yeah, that yeah. really that is helpful to find how to counsel the patient at the same time what treatment has to be given we have yeah. to counsel uh-huh. the patient is it not so in that way it is very useful and now now i think you people are doing a wonderful scan mm-hmm. uh, no is it yes. not I, I, most of the diagnosis is there before the mri and all those things are done and your high resolution scans are really doing wonders you should know the subject that's yes. all we can find out anything yes, <laughs> and proper interpretation is required with clinical uh, knowledge yes, that is sufficient i think yes ma'am still in uh, cases of enlarged uterus and all even if the resolution of ultrasound is high yeah. mr always plays a better role ma'am that is always there is it not mm. yeah. <laughs> very nice presentation pavani good okay ma'am <laughs> ma'am any more inputs ma'am uh, uh in trophoblastic uh, ma'am many disease, questions na? or uh, gestational trophoblastic disease like you have been commenting that uh, how the picture is yes Uh, can we find out uh, how much the myometrial layer are involved in all those things or we need to go for mri if it were really to be a big uh, de- uh, yes like proportional mri is always uh, better mri is always better okay even for gtd na no? uh, yes no okay okay complete abortion spontaneous and this uh, coming to subchorionic hemorrhage we would uh, uh, like to uh, like repeatedly we will be doing the scan and uh, whether the growth is proper or not depending upon the amount of the bleeding that has happened the growth might be proper or there must be some lag is it not in that way we would like to have repeated scans and at the same time we would like to know the size of the hemorrhage whether it is reduced or not those yes, things we would like to know Yes, ma'am. Uh, actually, like uh, if any patient who comes to us with UPT positive status, if you are not finding any inter or extra uterine sac, we usually ask for a follow up, ma'am. Yeah, Because definitely. Time, so it is like after fourteen, ten uh, to fourteen days, we can easily find out, is it not? We can yes. pick up where it is. If it if at all we are not able to find, we'll yes. always always ask for a follow up. so that yeah. uh, we mu- we might not miss an ectopic pregnancy mm. yes definitely at the same time we will be also guarding them whether she had any pain or not any complaint is there we would like to ask her to attend the casualty immediately yes ma'am uh, sure any uh, like oh, what uh, uh, any other in, uh, questions you want to ask uh, about these things mm-hmm. <laughs> mom yeah please tell me huh. and and the thing is like uh, in, in incomplete abortion <laughs> we would like to uh, see whether it is uh, uh, vascular or not and the, and the thickness of the uh, products that are there usually after medical mdp no yes the yes, uh, less than 15 mm we we'll like to uh, follow yes. up the case with the scan and we will give the misoprostol drugs is it not yes. so repeatedly when we ask for a scan huh. whether there is vascular pickup or not those things we would like to know hmm. okay 
if there is really vascular pickup is there but we can't find out any fetus and ah, yes, pass because in retained the products, the products are... yeah that's what that uh, of these retained products if anything more than uh, 15 mm definitely we'll go for cleaning is it not but mm. in the borderline uh, places where it is less than 15 yes, or equal to 15 mm in those conditions no we'll give some uh, drugs for them again misoprostol will be given if she can pass those products and again we'll ask for go for a next scan mm. after two days in this uh, next scan if she is there in that 15 mm and at the same time but there is no vascular pickup then we would like to wait for 10 days and she is not uh, she if she is like slight bleeding and all those things we don't i don't even directly go for dnc immediately i don't jump into conclusion for dnc so that's how i follow up my cases okay. and out of 10 to 15 cases of these uh, uh, incomplete abortions i uh, i have a necessary to go only for one case or two cases for dnc like today uh, i am telling you no just before i have come i have done for a uh, incomplete abortion they have complained yesterday that they have uh, passed the product in uh, after using a mtp kit but the problem is the scan was given around 15 mm so it is in the borderline then i thought okay let us wait and uh, whether she will pass the remaining products or not what happened i have given her the misoprostol tablets today morning we have checked again and uh, by the time they came the sonal just was not available so i have to do my transvaginal scan where i could find uh, endometrial thickness being 15 mm at the same time there is a vascular pickup so immediately i have decided for uh, cleaning up okay. and we have gone to the theater and done the procedure so those are the emergency conditions where we would like to know the picture in a clear way okay. in a twin pregnancy ma'am uh, if the there is an em- single uh, embryo demise then how would you continue that yeah thing? if it is uh, like we are we, uh, we need not worry na we will just follow up the cases that's all so so many cases i have seen uh, below 12 weeks mm-hmm. uh, if the baby is not there we waited and uh, what you have said like fetus preparations and we have delivered and uh, one of such cases was uh, my case of uh, uh, precious pregnancy infertile pregnant infertile female couple uh, infertile couple of uh, Seven to eight years, I think so. They had didn't have children, and uh, they have conceived uh, with the ovulation induction. That uh, that was twins, and again one was uh, both of them are all right till twelve weeks. After twelve weeks, uh, that was uh, no, one of the fetuses was absent, and we followed the case. It was like long back, eight years or even now the children are ten years, I think. Yeah. we used to i used to follow with the uh, via medical center suman sir and he used to give me those uh, information like how the baby is and the pro- during that period we didn't have proper uh, uh, guidelines for uh, one of the fetuses demise in twins nowadays we have lot of information that we can continue the pregnancy of, uh, of one of the fetuses is uh, not there also uh, till the next baby attains maturity also we are waiting with the regular follow up of the blood parameters and we are delivering the baby after the baby has attained its maturity or proper weight is it not so the scenario is completely changed previously we used to get afraid of when when the twins one of the twin is gone is it not so we are now waiting for yes, no, there are a few complications for the remaining plasma yeah that was like uh, intracerebral malaria and all those things no but the uh, those much those complications are not uh, uh, to that uh, high level uh, encephalomalacia and growth yeah. okay nowadays we are uh, just uh, ob- observation is uh, we are doing only regular scanning is being done we are able to deliver properly very good number of cases i think i have done two or three uh, lscs where uh, iud one of the fetuses were gone for iud and uh, and uh, in the first trimester i have seen three to four cases where it, get, it got observed 
and finally only one baby is uh, good in good state of yes ma'am it was a very nice presentation pavani thank you ma'am for it, uh, giving us an opportunity <laughs> okay thank you thank you thank you ma'am for uh, accepted our request to be as a chief guest on this thank you thank you thank you